Okay, we're gonna do lesson 13-8. This is page 715 in your math workbook, page 715. Okay, Lindsay and Matt are running in a one mile race. They have both run the same distance so far. So important things. Their races are each one mile long and so far they're, they're tied, they've run the same distance. Write a fraction that shows how far Lindsay could have run and write a fraction that shows how far Matt could have run. So basically these have to be equivalent fractions because their whole is the same, one mile. It'd be different if one of them was running a one mile race and the other one was running a two mile race, then our, our fractions aren't necessarily going to be equivalent because half of a one mile race is very different than half of a 10 mile race, okay? But they're both running a one mile race and they've run the same distance. We basically want two fractions that could equal each other, okay? So let's say that, let's try to use half, okay? So Lindsay's run one half. So what other fraction could we use here? Could we say that Matt has run two fourths? Can we say that Matt has run three sixths? Sure, how about four eighths or six twelfths, right? Anything that's that's still is it would be equivalent to one half as we come down through here, okay? So we could say that Lindsay's run one half and then you pick another fraction that equals one half. Okay, so I'm gonna do four eighths, but you could pick anything. And remember, you should be able to do this to your fraction. You should be able to put them both there and go, okay, two times what equals four uh, times eight, that's four, four, and it works. Okay, so if you did six twelfths, that, that would work. If you did two fourths, uh, three sixths, any one of those, okay? Are the two fractions you wrote equivalent? Yes, um, how do you know? It could be um, because I can multiply the top and bottom number. That would be the numerator and denominator, right? By the same number and get the new fraction. So you can pause it and write that down. Okay, let's take a look at the back here. Clara and Anna are making rugs. The rugs will be the same size. Okay, that's important. We, they have to be the same size or else we have a very difficult time comparing fractions and saying they're equivalent. Clara has finished three-fourths of her rug and Anna has finished three-eighths. Three so three-fourths compared to three-eighths. Who has finished more? So we want to know which is a greater fraction, okay? Again, think back. Oh, wait, first of all, conjecture. Conjecture is like a prediction. Like, this is what I think the answer is. I'm going to make a conjecture. Clara has finished a greater portion of her rug. So this is Clara and this is Anna, okay? So the prediction is that three-fourths is greater than three-eighths. Okay, there's a couple ways we can look at this. We can look at a number line here. Okay, here's three-fourths, and then we made sure the number lines were exactly the same, and we divided this one into fourths, and we divided this one into eighths because we're looking at fours and eights, okay? So three-eighths is here. So which, which is more, three-fourths or three-eighths? Three-fourths, okay? So the conjecture was correct. Clara has finished a greater amount at three-fourths than at three-eighths. Okay, so down here, they want to know if you didn't use a number line, how could you be sure that three-fourths and three-eighths, uh, that three-fourths is bigger than three-eighths? Okay, so since our numerators are the same, we know we have three pieces of each, then what we can do is compare the denominators and say which one are bigger slices, right? If we have something divided into fourths, these are gonna be pretty big compared to something divided into eighths, right? Just like that pizza. We take that pizza and we divide it into four slices. Those are gonna be pretty big slices compared to taking the same size pizza and dividing it into eights. If it's divided into eights and we eat three of them, we ate a whole lot less than if we divided the pizza into fourths and we ate three of them. So remember, this was the lesson from um, 
Wednesday of last week where we looked at if we had the same numerator, how do we compare the denominators? And the bottom line is the bigger the denominator, I'm sorry, the smaller the denominator, the less pieces that we are dividing that into, okay? So if I, these are my two pizza slices right here. I mean, my pizzas, my whole pizzas. I divide this one into fourths and I divide this one into eighths, okay? So three of these, oops, oh my goodness, Mrs. McGee, I shaded four of them. That's why we don't use pen and math, huh? So if I ate three of the pizza slices, three eighths, that's a whole lot less than if I ate three fourths, okay? Because when I divide something into fourths, the pieces are much bigger than if I take the same size and divide it into eight equal slices. So it's the opposite of what we want it to be, but that's why we did the pizza lesson, okay? All right. Paul and Anna are eating burritos. The burritos are the same size. Super important. Someone has a child's burrito and someone has a big old honking party size burrito and they each ate half of it. That's a different amount of half, right? So Paul ate four sixths of burrito. Okay, so Paul is four sixths and Anna is two thirds. Okay, draw a diagram to help justify the conjecture. Okay, so I'm gonna use, um, burritos, right? I'm just going to draw burritos. This is my big old burrito. Now they need to be the same size. Okay, as best I can. This is pretty close. So we're going to divide this one into six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this one into thirds. Okay, so we have four sixths and two thirds. I should have made these right on top of each other so we could really see here. Um, but it looks about the same to me. I should, I should have put them right on top of each other so you could see. But if we look here, okay, I'm, I'm gonna move this like this. Okay, so we have four sixths, one, two, three, four, that's right there and two thirds right there. Do you see how these are the same line? Four six and two thirds. So it's going to be, those are the same, they made the eight, they ate the same amount of burrito because they ate, they took it into six pieces and they ate four of them or they cut it into three pieces and ate two of them. And if I look and I, um, so is the conjecture correct? Paul and Anna ate the same amount? Yes. Um, four sixth is equal to two thirds. And let's let's do our multiplication to make sure. Okay, what can you multiply or divide times three to get to two? You would have to divide, I'm sorry, by th div six divided by two is three and four divided by two is two. So if you can multiply or divide the top and bottom by the same number and get your new fraction, then you know they're equivalent, okay? Raina has a blue ribbon that is one yard. So blue equals one yard and a red ribbon that is two yards. So we need to right away know we are not comparing the same size whole, okay? So that's, that's a big difference. So she uses half of the red and two fourths of the blue. The conjecture is that she used the same amount of red and blue. Okay, first of all, one, we're saying one half is equal to two fourths, okay? Which is actually true. Right, because if we divide, or I'm sorry, multiply by two and multiply by two, we know that two fourths is the same as one half. However, half of one yard is not the same as half of two yards, okay? If this, if this is a yard, okay, and this would be my blue, then my red is gonna be two yards, which is going to be like this and a whole nother one, right? Okay, this is two yards. We have two yards and one yard. So the red, we divide in half. Ah, sorry. Red, okay, she uses half of the ribbon. Did I do this wrong? Blue ribbon is one yard. 
Red ribbon is two yard. Okay, red is two, blue, okay, good. Okay, she uses half of the red ribbon. Okay, so if this is two yards, right? And she uses half of that. If this whole thing is two, she uses half, I divide it in half, that means she used this whole thing. So she basically used one whole yard, right? She used half of the red ribbon. And she used two-fourths of the blue ribbon. So that means I need to take my blue and divide it into four sections. So she used this much blue, okay? So is that the same? She used this much blue and that much red. It's not the same, okay? Um, uh, so is it correct? No. Um, construct an argument to justify. No, because... Um, they are both half, right? Because two-fourths is the same as half. And we know that half of one is not the same as half of two, okay? If I have two pies and I eat half, that means I ate one whole pie. If I have one whole pie and I ate half, that means I ate half of a pie, okay? Explain another way you can justify your response. Um, I could use fraction strips, right? Or I could I could draw a picture. I could draw a picture or use fraction strips, okay? Okay. All right, pause that and then go into the back. If you need to pause it, if you need to finish writing it. Okay. 21 students worked at the school fair. Mrs. Gold's students worked at a class booth. The table shows the fraction of one hour, okay, so one hour total, that all of her students worked on Monday. Mrs. Gold wants to know all the students who worked less time than Kathy. Okay, so Kathy worked two-fourths of an hour, okay, which is really half, right? Two-fourths is the same as one-half. So she worked half an hour, so we wanna know which one of these people worked less than her. Um, so what comparisons do you need to make to find out we need to compare um, one-fourth, two-sixths, and three-fourths to two-fourths. What is the whole for Kathy's time? Do the times for the other students use that same whole? Yes, okay, it is one hour. They each are using one hour. So that makes it very easy. We, we have to be comparing it to the same thing. What tool could you use to solve this problem? Okay, so we could look at fraction strips, right? Our fraction flip book, as we like to call it. Um, that's probably the best one to use for that, okay? Um, Okay, so we would use our fraction flip book to compare the fractions to two fourths because that's, that's what we're comparing us to is Kathy. So here's how I would do that. Okay, let me move this over here a little bit. Okay, so two fourths, Kathy worked right here, two fourths. The other ones we wanna look at is one fourth. So Tim worked one fourth. So did he work less time than she did? Absolutely, she worked two fourths, he worked one fourth. So for sure, Tim worked less. because one-fourth is less than two-fourths, okay? You can pause it if you need to, to copy that down. The other one we wanna compare next is Jose. He was at two-sixths, okay? Here's Jose at two-sixths. So here's two-fourths and here's two-sixths, which makes sense because the fourths are gonna be bigger chunks of time, right? We took an hour and we divided it into four equal parts. 
compared to take an hour and divide it into six equal parts. So two sixths is less than two fourths. So Jose also worked less, okay? And that is because two sixths is less than two fourths, which also makes sense because again, looking at those denominators, we have the same numerator, the, the four, even though it's a smaller number, the, the pieces are going to be bigger, okay? So, and then we wanna look at Pedro. Pedro worked three fourths of an hour, okay? So right now we're gonna compare Oh, two fourths, right? Two, three fourths. Well, think about it. The denominator's the same. So they're both fourths. Kathy worked two fourths. Jose worked three fourths. So let's take a look here. Here's the fourths. So there's two fourths. Jose worked three fourths. So Jose worked longer than her. So who worked less time? Uh, Tim and Jose. Sorry, it was Pedro's last one. Pedro did not, okay, because three-fourths is greater than two-fourths. So it's really just Tim and Jose, okay? Great job.